There's still an ongoing debate in this country, as you know if you've been watching the program, about multiculturalism, which has been rather controversial, and which many of our political leaders think is failing because it separates people rather than bringing them together. That's what they say anyway. But that's not the case in the world of the arts, where writers and performers, both here and abroad, have been bringing people together through difference for years. One of them is the Nigerian-German writer Olimide Popula. Poems called Water Running From My Mouth, and they are written to, by, uh, to photographs by a photographer called Regine Romain. She's um, Haitian, uh, Haitian American, and the poems explore the notion and the connection of voodoo and resistance. That call before the tide ripped and bowed, stripped not memories, clipped not wings. What? What? On water. That call? Mother said it wouldn't be too long. She'd swallow like she can. She'd tear away from scenes of unproportion. But it doesn't work like that in stale water. That too they knew, so they spat and burned and cursed and fled from the inside pockets of this hope, bursting into confused of reality. Let's call it real estate. Olumide Popula, from that stage right here to our studio. Let's give it a round of applause. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And you're very animated on stage, but here you just look almost sphinx-like, just very, very serene. <laughs> so what's the fire in your belly? What's causing all this? I don't know, passion. I think passion for life. Mm -hmm. I'm driven by emotionality and passion, yeah. I'm listening to the accent now. I mean, mm. I know you were raised in Germany, that's right, mm. isn't it? Yes, so, yes, that's right. German father, uh, sorry, a German uh, mother... And Nigerian, Nigerian father. father, okay. Mm. And, and do you feel particularly German? No, I feel very much mixed. Really? Uh, yeah, because I spent a few years in Nigeria as a child as well, and then I travelled back and forth, and I feel very much a product of both cultures. Aha. This yeah. is interesting because I know mm. that our, our yeah. guests here have been getting very exercised about multiculturalism, mm. and I think they have a different attitude towards it in Germany. They have this thing called Light Kultur, light as in the culture. leading culture, uh, yeah. which is Germanic as opposed to anything from anywhere else in the world. Yeah. They do. I mean, I've left Germany almost 10 years ago, so I'm not sure from the ground how the vibe is at the moment, but that was definitely an issue before. And they don't deal very well with multiculturalism. I think it's still coming. But um, I was listening earlier to what you were saying, and I think the problem is a bit about this notion about purity, yeah. that mm -hmm. we have these pure cultures and now others are coming and um, it gets convoluted. It's we don't develop in a vacuum. Yeah. Everybody's influenced by everything all the everything time. Everything around you yeah. as well, oh, your environment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, uh, it is evolutionary, isn't it? And Britain has been a mixing bowl forever. From so, From, uh, yeah, you know, to absorb uh, the modern world into Britain is part of what makes us live. Mm -hmm. And the notion about tradition, tradition is constantly changing. It's not a fixed thing. 
Britishness is not a fixed thing. It is not the same that it was even two years ago, let alone ten oh, years absolutely. ago. So I think it's very important to be aware of that. I think People can often say, changing. oh, we've always done that. And in point of fact, it's no, no, it's only haven't. about ten years old. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> People's memories are getting very, very short. Yeah. So um, how do you find the, um, the writing, the creative environment here in London compared to, say, um, big cities in Germany? It's very vibrant. It's just a, it's a matter of, of size because you have more people, more people of color. Let's just put mm -hmm. it. So you have different in London, in, in London mm -hmm. especially in London. So you have loads of different influences, people from different cultures, languages. I'm very interested in languages, hybrid languages, how language can change yes. because we are, our tradition is evolving. So it's just opportunities a little bit more, more interesting yes. for me here. Yeah. I mean, you're reaching beyond uh, Germany, beyond the UK. I mean, just looking at where your work is being published, you know, in Slovenia, South Africa, USA, Sri Lanka, of course, Nigeria, Nigeria. as well, as well, as well. I, I know your latest book is not about sadness. It's all about something else. Yes. So we'd like to hear a bit of it, if that's OK. okay. I'll read a bit from the beginning and explain. No, is this a novella? It's is a it? novella. It's a short okay. novel. Um, forgive my attempts at the accents, but I have to kind of do it. So we're diverse here. Are. We can accept your accents. <laughs> okay, okay. So, from the beginning. Experiences come in all manners. They spread and engage, tug and pull, question and challenge. Much longer than you desire. My name is Tebu, Tebucho. I arrived yesterday. It is spring, they say, but I wasn't prepared for this. What a strange city. It looks nice outside with the sun shining, the clouds sitting fat and well-fed underneath the blue of the sky. But when we stepped out of the cab, it was not as I expected it. Ish, the wind is too cold. I'm here to forget what's happened on the corner of Coma and Poch, that stretch of red earth before the tar begins, where the fine dust is whisked up by speeding cars, where the soil is hard but layered with the finest the finest of dust. Three months and 15 days ago, I stood on that corner. Zanella and Pedita were having one of their usual arguments, so I'd left the party. Not to disappear, not to smoke, I don't. Not even Dacha. I just wanted to catch some air, think about what to do and if this was going to be one of those nights and I had to make the long way to number 36 by myself. I stood on that dusty corner only for a few minutes. When your life changes, you cannot foresee the impact. But when it does, the things that happen are unstoppable. My name is Tebu, Tebuho. I arrived yesterday. Well, she came one day, small and fragile. Pretty little thing, but you think she a thing she can carry bricks or? I never want to talk to her. Me, I just sitting in my front room looking out of the window. Me no need no young little thing I tell me how the world must run, nah. She always got something to say. Asking, always asking. Then her eyes look pum like say she never gonna see me again. Her big eyes. Like she won't find something upon the bottom of the well. Me, well, very well, but no well, no so. <laughs> she work hard, man. She could have worked hard. Drag out of the old things out of the house, clear the garden all by herself. It was an accident. Everyone says so. Everyone comes with the past. That's where the story lies, naturally. She? She came in a cab, motor running, cabin leaning against the black roof, smoking. Thank you very much indeed. Mm. Okay, this is not about sadness. Does it, does it get happier then, later on in the novella? <laughs> it starts rather bleakly. I think it does. And it's, it's a metaphor. It's not about sadness because it's about love. It's about friendship. Mm -hmm. And in some ways about transformation and of course, uh, you know, I can hear so the transformation, the energy. Yeah, so what I movement. like about that, uh, from the title onwards, it's universal. Mm, yeah. That's from the particular, the universal works. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with Desmond's, for example, because of the particular detail. The situation. Somehow, yeah. everybody mm. recognizes the truth. Yes. Yeah. And that's what affects all of us. Yeah. You know. And what's the market like, Illuminate, for a novella these days? I don't know. I was very, very fortunate. This is the German press, and they had a new imprint, and the editor knew me so they asked me had us some work so I said I don't really have anything in German but I have this if you're interested I don't think the market is very very good for novellas which is unfortunate because a lot of people like reading them because they're mm -hmm. shorter nice short burst and I see you also hold a BSc in Ayurvedic medicine explain please mm, I, yes it's in complementary health sciences Ayurvedic medicine is traditional Indian medicine I studied that I went to India I did an internship there mm -hmm. in a private clinic so but I'm not practicing if you need any. Oh, right, okay. I'll have to refer you. How you marry. Well, this, is, this is great in a way because yeah. you're marrying so many different sides of yourself. You feel German, you feel Nigerian. You're 
I have into Ayurvedic medicine. At the same time, you're writing about Tabo, um, who has patois. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that. Where was the other character from? One was from South Africa. One Jamaican. I uh -huh. yeah. got it quite good. No, I, I was because yeah. I, I thought, is I this, like this Tabo? Yeah. <laughs> I like the chops. The chops. She did. Oh, did, did it ring yeah. true for yeah, you? Did it? It was good. The, the mm. punctuation of when she did it was well. Mm -hmm. Thank, no, you. Yeah. Thank you. So, what happens for you next then, Olumide? At the moment, I'm doing a PhD in creative writing, so I'm trying to focus on that. Yeah. But why do you need to do a PhD in creative writing, given that um, you're a published author and you have been published for many years? Is it just a title? What, what is it about? I don't need to. First of all, I like the work. I like the marrying of um, theory and creative work. Yeah. So it just was a natural extension in that way, just to go deeper and work on a project. And also, I have a great team of supervisors. So it's almost like I have mentors there that are there to help me along with my next big project. Mm -hmm. So. And then what next? A full, fully fledged novel? Yeah, absolutely. What with Tabo? Will it be Tabo, or will mm, it be it Bonsu, or will <laughs> it be Janelle or Humphrey? It will the be. Uh, I think the main character probably will be called Carl. Carl. Oh, Carl. Carl. Why? Um, you just feel it's his story, so there might be a Carl. There's no. It's just his no. story. <laughs> I feel very strongly about my characters, and they. I don't know. Other writers might feel differently, but they come to you. So Carl came to you. Came and he's before. there, and now we're developing where he wants to go. Yeah, so the I've creative process is often I've heard finding out about your character, absolutely, yes. not I've inventing heard that it. From yeah. many people, uh -huh. yes. yeah, spending cool. time with them, hanging out, you know, hanging out with your characters in your mm -hmm. head, getting to know who they are, what who they, they are. do, what they, what would they say, eat. Well, yeah. perhaps you can say a little bit more about Carl at the LSE, the London School of Economics Literary Festival, coming up. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's a literary festival, and they invited me for the panel. It's called Placing Mobilities. Mm -hmm. It's with Brian Shikwawa mm -hmm. and Abdurraza Gune. Mm -hmm. So it, it's about some of the notions that I com come into play in the novella about diaspora, movement, exile, even how we intermingle, yeah. maybe longing, belonging. So I'm quite excited about that and to talk about the issues. So that's a London School of Economics Literary Festival. Next Saturday, yeah, next week. one o'clock. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, all Thank of you, you indeed. Me. And that's it for Shoot the Messenger for another week. Do watch out for the repeat screenings of today's programme and check us out on voxafrica.com. It just remains for me to say salute, salute, votre santé to my guests, <laughs> Olumide Popula, Janelle Oswald, Humphrey Barclay and Iamide Thomas.